Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello, today we will be discussing about uh, fracture healing and we come across many patients who have a fall or get involved in a road traffic accident and then have a fracture and we have seen patients come to the hospital in a cast. Now, casts if you remember are kept for a very, very long time. So, the time period can uh, go anywhere between 4 to 6 weeks and there are a lot of factors which uh, affect the way a bone heals. So, today we will look at the uh, steps uh, that are involved in fracture healing. So, we look at the different steps which are involved in this process and we shall see if you can explain how fracture healing occurs in people. Now, now, these are the different steps through which the bone undergoes before the bone fracture can heal. So, it starts with what is known as hematoma formation followed by inflammation and then there is a soft callus formation, a hard callus formation and finally, the bone is remodeled. So, let us look at how each of this process uh, moves. So, before I touch into that, let us look at this little picture which shows the normal bone and if you look at the surface of this bone, you have on the periphery what is known as the cortex of the bone and in the center you have what is known as the medulla. So, all fractures need not always involve the medulla. So, sometimes it is a partial fracture, sometimes it is a complete fracture and the nature of these fractures can also affect the time taken for healing of uh, the bone tissue. So, the first thing that happens when a bone is fractured is formation of a hematoma. So, if you uh, think back and remember how a wound heals. So, you remember that there is a primary wound healing, there is a secondary wound healing. Similarly, in bone also there can be primary healing or secondary healing and primary healing occurs whenever the bone is very firm and fixed in its place. For example, when there is a fixation plate put while secondary healing comes occurs when the firmness of fixation is not as strong. For example, the patient's fracture is put in a cast. So, just like uh, healing of soft tissues or skin that can be primary or secondary healing even in bone fractures. Now, whatever is the uh, type of healing that occurs. The first uh, stage is a formation of hematoma and as we all know that a hematoma is nothing but a fibrin meshwork in which the red cells and the white blood cells and platelets are caught. So, the first stage in uh, fracture healing would be formation of hematoma. Now, this hematoma formation is followed by what is known as a phase of inflammation. So, as the word inflammation uh, tells you, there is a lot of inflammatory cells coming in and there will be a lot of growth factors being released by these inflammatory cells. So, uh, the predominant cell which plays its important role are the platelets along with the other inflammatory cells and a huge gamut of uh, factors, growth factors as well as interleukins are released. And the most important among them is uh, platelet derived growth factor PDGF as well as uh, transforming growth factor beta and the fibroblast growth factor. So, all these inflammatory cytokines will be released in large amounts and these inflammatory cytokines will then stimulate what is known as the osteoprogenitor cells. So, these are the cells which can differentiate and uh, give rise to the 
osteoblasts. And as the osteoblasts are formed, again a lot of cytokines are released and even the osteoclasts move into this area where the hematoma had formed. Now, let us look at the, the role of these osteoblasts uh, in fracture healing. Now, the osteoblasts are located on the surface of the bone. So, from the surface of the bone, the osteoblasts uh, do the function and they initiate the process of uh, bone formation. Now, these osteoblasts they have a lot of receptors on their surface and they help in uh, release of lot of uh, growth factors as well as they interact with the extracellular matrix proteins. Now, uh, as they are interacting they will help to lay down the woven bone and which will slowly get remodeled into lamellar bone. So, now since osteoblasts are laying down bone, there has to be certain cells which will help to resorb the extra bone. Now, this function is done by the osteoclasts. So, osteoclasts are the cells which are involved in removal of bone otherwise known as bone resorption. Now, these cells are multinucleated. Osteoblasts have single nucleus while osteoclasts are multinucleated cells which are located in what is known as the resorption pits. Now, these also uh, bind to the bone surface via the integrins. So, hence in the area of fracture you have a close interaction between the bone osteoblasts which are going to lay down bone while and the osteoclasts which are going to help remodel and remove the excess bone. So, both these cells have a very important role to play along with the osteoprogenitor cells and the mesenchymal cells which are present at the site of fracture. Now, as we said we looked at the first two phases that is formation of hematoma and followed by the phase of inflammation. So, the next phase is the formation of callus and this callus is initially very soft and by the end of the first week a good amount of callus is formed and if you look at the surrounding tissues as well as the fractured ends of the uh, bone, these uh, zones are getting remodeled and a fusiform shaped uncalcified tissue is laid at the fractured site. A fusiform shaped uncalcified tissue is laid down at that fractured site which means the zone of fracture will be replaced by a uncalcified soft tissue and this is what is known as the soft callus or the procallus. So, it is on this that the uh, bony tissue is going to be laid down. So, what is the work of this uh, procallus? It is it provides a kind of anchorage for uh, holding the broken ends together, but remember that it provides no rigidity. It is, has no strength as yet and that is why if you uh, see uh, patients who are having casts in the initial few weeks they are not allowed to bear weight because the callus at this point is very very soft. So, soft callus cannot take any weight. So, that is why the patients have to walk with crutches or they are immobilized in a particular position. So, this is the phase when there is a soft callus formation which is a totally having no strength. So, absolutely no strength. Now, after the soft uh, callus is formed, uh, we spoke the of the activated progenitor cells which are uh, present in the subperiosteal area. So, uh, from that zone the osteoprogenitor cells will start laying down woven bone and this woven bone is oriented perpendicular. So, it is arranged perpendicular to the axis of the cortex. So, the osteoprogenitor cells which were present just below the periosteum will start laying down woven bone and these will be arranged perpendicular to the axis of the uh, cortical bone and, and slowly it is going to uh, form even within the medullary zone. Now, <coughs> along with this the mesenchymal cells can also differentiate to form chondroblasts and these chondroblasts will then synthesize the fibrocartilage as well as the 
hyaline cartilage. Now, together all these structures will form what is known as the heart callus. So, we started with hematoma formation after which there was a phase of inflammation, then the fractured ends were anchored using the soft callus and then over the soft callus woven bone is laid down by the osteoprogenitor cells. So, kind of from the subperiosteal zone they start moving into the area of fracture and they replace the uh, area of fracture. Now, if you look at this picture, you can see that the entire zone of hematoma is now being laid down with bone and the type of bone that we saw was woven bone. Now, why is this called woven bone or how is woven bone identified? It is identified by looking at the cells within it. Now, if these cells are very irregularly arranged without any linear pattern, then we know that this is woven bone. Again, the strength of woven bone is not as much as lamellar bone. So, this bone is laid down first in the cortical zone and then as it moves inwards, it replaces even the medullary area of the tissue. Now, over time this woven bone will get converted into lamellar bone. So, within 2 to 3 weeks, uh, the entire woven bone will start getting replaced by the uh, lamellar bone. Now, once the hard callus has formed, uh, we will notice that the callus uh, is made up of lot of uh, excessive fibrous tissue, it is made of cartilage, it is made of bone and if the bone is very poorly aligned, very poorly aligned or the patient has not taken care, then we will see an extensive amount of callus formation and the fracture will not heal in the requisite time. So, that is why immobilization is another very Im important aspect of fracture healing. So, this excess amount of uh, callus which has formed has to be remodeled, has to be restructured so that the normal structure of bone is uh, formed. So, we do not want any excess bone to form over the uh, original bony tissue. So, this is taken care of by the body by a process what is known as remodeling. So, what is this remodeling? As this callus is maturing, uh, you would have noticed that the patients are given instructions to slowly start to weight bear. Now, this is also a very important aspect in fracture healing. So, as the patient or the person starts to bear weight on uh, the particular area. Uh, the forces help to remove the extra callus that is formed beyond the margins of the normal bone. So, wherever there is no uh, physical stress applied, those areas of the bony callus will be resorbed, it will be removed. So, which brings back the normal continuity of the bone right? and ultimately finally, the medullary cavity will be restored. So, these are some of the important stages of uh, uh, fracture bone. Now, the ossification which occurs can be either intramembranous or it can be an endochondral ossification. Now, if usually primary healing uh, heals by an intramembranous uh, or organization of fracture healing, while the secondary type we can see a lot of endochondral ossification also. Now, to summarize, we looked at the different stages of uh, bone healing which started just like wound healing of skin, where the first stage is formation of a hematoma, which means from the tone vessels a lot of blood collects and you have a hematoma formation and within the fibrin meshwork, there are a lot of red blood cells, there is a lot of platelets and inflammatory cells getting caught. So, this phase will then lead to what is known as a place phase of inflammation and in this phase of inflammation, what happens here is the inflammatory cells, the platelets, they release a lot of cytokines and growth factors, 
for example, like platelet derived growth factor, transforming growth factor and these factors stimulate the osteoporogenitor cells to produce the osteoblasts. And once the osteoblasts are produced, we also have the osteoclasts which come into the area. This is followed by a phase of formation of soft callus following which woven bone is laid down and then as the patient weight bears, lamellar bone is formed and finally, the bone is remodeled to reach as good a structure as the normal bone. Now, complete uh, remodeling may take months or even years, but usually the entire process of fracture healing is over by about 6 weeks. So, we hope you got a good overview. Thank you.